Welcome, my dear students of 9A and 9B to my civics class. You see, the lesson, the making of our constitution has given us some ideas, some knowledge of the, of the Indian constitutional procedure and its system. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, who was the constitution maker, how did he frame the constitution I discussed? Who helped him in uh, uh, giving advices before framing of the constitution I discussed? And the respective, the most important uh, dist uh, and distinguished woman who also had given many advices before framing the constitution of India, that point I have not yet discussed. Now some points which I have not yet discussed, now I am going to discuss it. Although the teaching as per the lesson I have completed, but some points which are mentioned in your book, some additional points I am going to discuss it for your better knowledge. Number one, first point, you look at it. The making of our constitution topic num name, the making of our constitution lesson number one. And uh, first point, prominent women members, 26 January, its importance, fundamental rights, fundamental duties, meaning of sovereign democratic republic. First point, prominent women members. Who are the prominent women members who played an important role before uh, enacting the constitution of India and before framing the uh, rules of the constitution of India by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. Now I am going to explain. Who were the prominent women members? There were some prominent women members who played an important role, positive role in the house before uh, framing the constitution by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. They provided many, many uh, necessary informations. They gave many advices to Dr. B. R. Ambedkar so that B. R. Ambedkar can make a complete constitution of our country. Who were they? They were Sarojini Naidu. Number one, Sarojini Naidu. Number two, uh, number two, Vijay Lakshmi Pandit, sister of Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru and daughter of uh, Motilal Nehru. And next one, Durga Bai Deshmukh, Durga Bai Deshmukh, Rajkumari Amrit Kaun. So these were the most important women, highly qualified women who received Western education, completed their higher education and joined Indian National Movement. They gave Dr. B. R. Ambedkar some advices before he would complete the procedure, complete the entire procedure of writing uh, the Constitution of India. So their positive role helped Dr. B. R. Ambedkar uh, prepare the framework of our constitution. The next point, 26 January importance. Now why is 26 January is important to us? Why is 26 January 1950 in the, you know, in the year 1950 the constitution of India was enacted? But why was 26 January? Why was that very date chosen by the constitution paper? What was the importance of the 26 January? 26 January, January was important. It was uh, important because uh, it uh, witnessed uh, historical events. It witnessed that very day, 26 January, witnessed a historical event beside the river Rovi of Pakistan during midnight when Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru as the president of the Lahore session of the Congress raised first India's tricolor flag and took an oath that Swaraj would be their main demand instead of 
dominion status instead of dominion status their main demand would be swaraj means complete independence then pandit jawaharlal nehru as the president of the lahore session of the congress during midnight decided the river rubia pakistan raised india's first tri color flag tri color flag and took an oath that their main demand would be complete independence means swaraj and that incident took place on 26 january 1930 that's why there was a historical uh, there was a historical uh, cause the 26 january was chosen to be the day uh, of enacting the constitution of india in the year 1950 by all the distinguished members of the constituent assembly and uh, the members of the drafting committee dr b r ambedkar was the chairman so as the head of the drafting committee he unanimously proposed it and supported by the members and then it was decided that the constitution of india would be enacted on 26 january 1950 that's why 26 january the day also is declared to be the republic day of india why because on that very day the india's first tricolor flag was raised by the river rabi of pakistan till the midnight by the by the president of the lahore session of the congress but it was on the that's why 26 january is very important to us next one fundamental rights what what are fundamental rights fundamental rights are the special rights of the citizens of india the constitution maker followed the instance from which constitution from the constitution of usa the constitution maker dr b r ambedkar he took that example from the constitution of the usa united states of america because in the united states of america constitution there is there is a provision of having uh, fundamental rights of the citizens so the same rights same same privilege dr b r ambedkar decided to provide to the citizens of india now what are the importance of the fundamental rights the fundamental rights are the rights of the citizen uh, to protect their to protect their rights democratic rights and fundamental rights are the rights through which the citizen can challenge can challenge it by going to any court so whenever the fundamental rights are violated by violated whenever the fundamental right generally fundamental rights cannot be violated but whenever fundamental rights of the citizens are violated the person can go to any court and the court is supposed to protect the fundamental rights of the citizens especially the supreme court is liable to protect the fundamental rights of the citizens in that case the supreme court can issue many deeds in order to protect the fundamental rights of the citizens and that's why fundamental rights are very important to us but sometimes fundamental rights are temporarily seized fundamental rights are suspended temporarily when during emergency during financial emergency during general emergency throughout the country by the president of india the fundamental rights can be uh, uh, can be suspended temporarily but as soon as emergency period is over fundamental rights uh, uh, can be uh, in, uh, can be effective can be effected and they get back their fundamental rights and next one fundamental duties what are fundamental duties from which constitution the fundamental duties the example of the fundamental duties uh, were taken from iris constitution dr b r ambedkar uh, you know took an example of fundamental duties and implemented it in the constitution of india now what is fundamental what are fundamental duties fundamental duties are some extra duties of the citizens of india to soldier 
but we are not bound to soul value it is the matter of uh, it is the matter of principle as a citizen of india it is our first and foremost duty to protect the country since our country india since india is our country it belongs to us so as a citizen of this country we will take all privileges from there we will not return it back so it is our first and foremost duty to get get back something for the welfare of the country since the country is giving us many 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 privileges as a citizen we are getting fundamental rights we are getting uh, various rights freedom of speech freedom to express our opinion freedom of having jobs freedom of education so freedom of exercising our religious beliefs and customs um, uh, without being obstructed independently and freedom of casting our vote freedom of forming a government or our political representatives so in return for what should be given to the country it is our first and foremost duty to uh, uh, make sure the integration of our country to protect the integration sovereignty of our country that's why we have to be careful from time to time whether someone else is uh, uh, you know degrading degrading our national degrading our you know uh, uh, you know our flag degrading any historical uh, uh, you know buildings monuments destroying trying to destroy historical buildings historical monuments whether someone is trying to uh, uh, attack our country by joining uh, some external uh, you know uh, elements or, or foreign enemies so this is our duty as a citizen uh, uh, to uh, look at the matters whether our country is in this thing or the thing attack by foreign powers as a citizen of our country is our first and foremost duty to make sure the independence of our country to establish brotherhood sovereignty integration good understanding among ourselves this is our first and foremost duty so these are the duties we have to obey but this is known as fundamental duties but fundamental duties can be violated uh, can be violated no but here there is no restriction imposed on the people they are not bound to follow it it is the matter of morality a citizen is bound to shoulder this type of responsibility morally this type of responsibilities on behalf of the country we are doing and next one last point meaning of sovereign democratic republic what is the meaning of sovereign what is the meaning of republic what is the meaning of you know secular sovereign so the, what is the meaning of sovereign democratic republic sovereign sovereign means independent with the ability of ability to take responsibilities for all decisions india is internally and externally a sovereign country externally free from the foreign control and internally there is a government made by the people of our country by choosing their representative this is known as sovereign and what is the meaning of democratic people of india has the authority has the right to make an independent government at all levels in the center in the state and in the public means in the you know local level by a system of universal adult franchise that means a person can be a voter a person having 18 years of age or uh, above can become a voter and can exercise his or her voting right and can make a person to be the representative of the country and by this way they can form a government a government by exercising their right voting rights every citizen every citizen enjoy their rights without any discrimination on the basis of caste creed religion community etc etc
so this is known as democratic and next point republic republic means india as an elected state elected head of state and democratic republic implies that the head of the state the head of the state is elected directly or indirectly for a term of fixed tenure fixed tenure the president of india is elected indirectly but the prime minister and the council of minister they are elected directly by the people's vote and the president is elected indirectly by the electoral college for a term of 5 years the post of the president is not hereditary any person can become president for a term of 5 years but after having completed the tenure the person may become and uh, the president of india twice or may not it is depending on his acceptability it is depending on his popularity he established by becoming the president of india another course is vice president vice president also can be uh, 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 vice president also is appointed indirectly by the votes of the electoral college uh, by the uh, people by the members of you know a parliament then uh, both of them vice president and the vice president they work anonymously in absence of uh, in absence of the vice the uh, absence of the president the vice president can hold all the responsibilities of the office of the president of india and uh, the vice president can become temporarily the president of india uh, because of the sudden death of the president and until the new president Uh, is the soul of the president the vice president uh, has to shoulder the responsibilities of the office of the president so this is nothing but the system of republic of our country you have to be my dear students thank you